All right, so I'm going to go over the homework problems that were due today, and hopefully if you were confused on some of these, um, this will give you an opportunity to hear an explanation about why the answers are what they are. So, jumping right in. Number one, we cross two black mice, and we get some black offspring and some white offspring. So the first thing we're gonna notice here is that if you cross black, and the offspring come out with some black offspring and some white offspring, first of all, black has to be dominant, because if black was recessive, think about it this way, if black was recessive, little b times little b, or little b, little b, there's no way you could get white offspring. All the offspring would be black. So the fact that we're crossing uh, two blacks and we're getting black and white means black, number one, black is dominant. And number two, the fact that they gave birth to some recessive offspring tells us that they have to be heterozygous. So big b, little b. The next question, what are the chances of them having another white offspring all they want you to do here is a Punnett square. You're not basing this on how many offspring they have already had. You're basing this solely on a Punnett square because every single time they have offspring, um, we basically start fresh with the same probabilities. So our chances of having another white offspring, if we do the Punnett square of two heterozygous black parents, would be one chance out of four or 25%. Question two, two black female mice are crossed with a brown male. In several litters, female, male, female one makes some black and some brown offspring, and female two makes all black offspring. So first of all, which trait is dominant? Well, if we cross uh, black and brown, look at female two, this is our clue. The male is brown, but when we cross with female two, we get all black offspring. So if you cross black and brown, and the offspring come out black, black has to be dominant. So they now want the genotypes of the parents. Well, let's do the male first. The male has to be little b, little b, because he's brown, and we just determined that brown was recessive. Now, for our females, female number one, notice that she gave birth to some brown offspring. It's not the numbers that are important, but the fact that she gave birth to some recessive offspring means she would have to be big b, little b. Female number two made all black offspring, which makes it very likely she is big B, big B. And finally, what are the genotypes of the brown offspring made by female number one? Well, the brown offspring would have to be little b, little b, because brown is recessive. So that's number two. Number three, so this is an incomplete dominance problem. Incomplete dominance, actually, it's funny because if you look online, Andalusian Fowl, some websites will say it's incomplete dominance and some websites will say it's co-dominance. It's not that important. Um, I think that some of their feathers are actually an in-between color. If they were truly speckled just black and white, that would be more co-dominance. But um, in this case, I believe they do actually have some grayish blue feathers, so that's why they're saying incomplete. Anyway, let's take a look. So they want us to cross blue uh, with a black. So we're saying that big B, big B is black according to this scenario, and it says that big B, little b is blue. So we're crossing this this is basically our cross. So big B, little b, with just one big B, we don't need both, and we get basically half of them big B, big B, half of them big B, little b. So the genotypes of the offspring would be big B, big B, and big B, little b. Um, if they asked for what percent, it would be half each. And the phenotypes would be that half the offspring would be expected to be black, and half the offspring would be expected to be blue. All right, moving on. Next is our dihybrid cross. So that's involving multiple traits. So you cross a homozygous tall round plant with a homozygous short wrinkled. The round and wrinkled are referring to their seeds, by the way. And it also tells you that tall and round are dominant. So for our original cross, homozygous means the letters are the same. We would have to be crossing big T, big T, big R, big R with um, little t, little t, sorry, little r, little r. And that would be the parents. The genotypes of the offspring would be big T, little t, big R, little r, all of the offspring. And the phenotypes of the offspring is that they would all be tall and they would all be round, because that's the definition of dominance, that you only need one copy of the capital letter. So again, the, uh, the answer here is here. Big T, little t, big R, little r would be your, your genotypes of your offspring, and they would all be tall and round. Now they want you to cross basically the F1s, two heterozygous, and they want you to give the phenotypes of the offspring as fractions. Now the easiest way to work this out is with um, the product rule. So I'm gonna do the product rule. So what we do with the product rule is we separate out our T's and our R's. 
So I'm just crossing the T's first. So big T, little T, big T, little T. And I notice there's a 3 fourths chance of tall and a 1 fourth chance of short. Now I'm going to cross my R's, and it's big R, little R, with big R, little R, because that's what they told us. And we get a 3 fourths chance of round and a 1 fourth chance of wrinkled. So our chances of tall and round are going to be the chance of tall, 3 fourths, times the chance of round, 3 fourths, 9 sixteenths. Our chance of tall wrinkled is 3 fourths times wrinkled chance is 1 fourth, so 3 sixteenths. Short round, that is 1 fourth chance of short times a 3 fourths chance of round, 3 sixteenths. And short wrinkled, it's a 1 fourth chance of short times a 1 fourth chance of wrinkled, and that's going to give you 1 sixteenth. And notice these should all add up to 1, 16 over 16. If they don't, that would be a big clue that you did something incorrectly. All right, looking at our next cross, number 5. So this one, um, this is a very good example of one of those problems where you're sort of solving a, a, a you know, like a, a mystery. So the ability to taste PTC, that's what we were tasting today to see if you could taste it or not, is dominant to not being able to taste, and normal pigment is dominant to, to being albino. So a normally pigmented woman, so immediately the woman is big in something, she cannot taste PTC, so she's little t, little t. And notice they mentioned that her father was albino and he could taste. Now, the fact that he could taste doesn't matter. If she can't taste, she's little t, little t. So that's not information we need. But the fact that he was albino, little in, little in, tells us that her second letter is little in. So she's big in, little in, little t, little t. Again, if they show the recessive trait, the parents, or if they tell you about their offspring, none of that stuff is necessary. It's, it's extraneous information. But if they show the dominant trait, then look at their parents or their offspring to figure out if they're homozygous or heterozygous. Okay, she marries a normally pigmented man who can taste. So he's a capital N and he has a capital T, but his mother, Oh, I'm sorry, and they also say that he's homozygous for normal pigment. So he's big in, big in, and then his mom could not taste PTC, so that means his second T has to be a little t. So that's our cross. So again, we want the chance of normal pigment non-taster children. So I'm going to use the product rule again. You can also do this with a Punnett square. So if I just cross my ends, we're only looking for the chance of non-taster. So the chance of non-taster is one half. Um, actually, oh, I'm sorry, this is for pigment. So the chance of normal pigment is actually all of them. So that's one. Then a, so the chance, so that's gonna be one times our chance of not being able to taste big T, little t with little t, little t. Sorry, that's your one half. So a one half chance of being a non-taster and again, you could say two out of two or four out of four here for the pigment, but the easiest thing to do is just reduce your fraction to one out of one. So one times one half, and it's basically a one half chance that their child would be a normal pigment non-taster. All right, our next problem with wolves. So wolves have, can sometimes have black coats, but black is recessive and they can sometimes have brown eyes. So brown eyes are dominant to blue, normal is dominant to black. Two normal coated brown eyed wolves make a blue eyed black coated offspring. Okay, so the reason they're telling you about the offspring is because the parents are capital N's and they have a capital B because they both have a normal coat and brown eyes, but their offspring is this, little b, little b, and little n, little n, which means our two parents have to be this. So they want to know, what are the chances of a normal coated blue-eyed offspring? So this is very similar to another one we just did. So the chance of a normal coat, I'm not going to fill this in, it's basically going to be 3 out of 4. And then the chance of blue eyes, if we cross our Bs, is just going to be, since that's recessive, it's just going to be this one. So that's going to be 1 out of 4. So our answer here is going to be... 3 sixteenths. Again, I didn't, I'm skipping through the Punnett squares, but um, you have them in an earlier problem. All right, 
this is called epistasis. So this is where multiple genes work together to make a trait. So in parakeets, um, it's talking about, there's basically four colors. There's yellow, blue, green, and white. What are the phenotypes? Let's see, so they have a green parakeet, but the green parakeet had a parent that was white. The reason they're telling you that is because white is little, 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 and green is capital and a capital. So they would have to be this, big B, little b, big Y, little y, and they're crossing them with a white one. So that's little, 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 little. They want to know what kind of offspring this, uh, this cross can make. Now, you can use the product rule, but since this one is actually a very small Punnett square, I'm going to do the Punnett square just to show you what it would look like. So if you did this with a Punnett square, you would have, this one can give big B with big Y, big B with little y, little b with big y, and little b with little y. So what we're representing here is all the possibilities of giving one copy of b and one copy of y. The other parent can only give little b and little y. So our offspring would be, we just fill this in now, big b, little b, little y, little y, little, little, big little, and little, 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 little. And so if we now sort that out, so our parents are here. This is gonna basically be a one-fourth chance of green, because this code is for green, a one-fourth chance of blue, this code is for blue, a one-fourth chance of yellow, and a one-fourth chance of white. Now you can also work this out uh, using the product rule, and then you would just multiply you know, your chances together. Um, if a yellow parakeet is crossed with a blue, what are the chances of a green? So I'll do this one with the product rule. So we're crossing big B, little b with little b, and then we're crossing big Y, little y with little y. All right, and the chances of green. So to be green, and this is a, a little different, it's gotta have a big B and a big Y. That's what we're looking for. So what are the chances of this having a big B? One out of two. And the chances that the offspring would get a big Y is one out of two also. So our answer here, one half times one half is one fourth. 